Hi and welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is about properties of quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree 2. Let's look at a couple of examples to quickly remind ourselves what that means. First off, if I have something like f of x equals x squared, that has degree 2. It's degree 2 because the largest exponent on any variable is 2. f of x equals 3x plus 2 has the largest exponent on that variable of 1. Therefore, it is not quadratic. But I could come up with something like 3x squared plus 2x plus 4, and that is quadratic. All quadratic functions have non-zero second differences. And so if the second differences are negative, that means it's going to open down. The parabola is going to open down. If the second differences are positive, the parabola is going to open up. So let's look at a couple of examples to see how this works. Now the question may say something like this. Find the first and second differences to determine if each table of values or table of values represents a quadratic function. Then determine the direction of opening if it is a quadratic function. So I've put up three examples here. Take the time to write these down and try doing it yourself first. Pause the video, try it out yourself, and see if you can get them. You can come back and check your answers with me in a moment. So I hope you had a chance to look at those yourself. Here are the first and second differences that I've calculated. And I'll do the first one, and then I'll just put up the answers for the other ones in a second. The first one, we always take the later number and subtract the earlier number. So we take negative 2 and we subtract negative 8 from it and that gives us the first difference of 6 because by subtracting the negative it's, it's as if we added 8. The second difference here we'll calculate in a moment. Let's keep going with the first difference. 0 minus negative 2 is 2. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Negative 8 ne minus negative 2 is negative 6. So we don't need to show the calculations every time. Just going ahead and plotting what they are, writing down what they are is fine. So now we go 2 minus 6, again, taking the later number, subtracting the earlier number. We get negative 4. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And negative 6 minus 2 is also negative 4. So the second differences are negative 4. So therefore, because the second differences are non-zero and they're all the same, it is quadratic. And it opens down. Always make sure that you answer what the whole question is saying. To just say it was quadratic was not asking what the whole question was saying. I'll put up the other answers for you now. So for part B, I hope you can notice that the first differences are all going to be positive because as we take the later number and subtract the earlier number, it gives us positive first differences. The second differences are also going to be positive. So therefore, you can see there that it's quadratic and it opens up. In the third case, we have y values that are all equally spaced. So the first differences are all going to be the same which means that the second differences are zero. And remember that if it's quadratic, the second differences are non-zero. So this has to be a linear case. Now a quadratic function can have several forms. And there are three forms in total. One of those forms is standard form. It's really important to make sure that you write these down properly. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And there are a few things we need to have here. The first is in which 
that a cannot be zero because if a is zero, that whole term ends up falling out, and we're left with bx plus c and no ax squared, which means it's just linear. But the a value determines a few things. It determines the direction of opening. If it's positive, it's going to open up. If it's negative, it's going to open down. But that's not it. It also determines the stretch or compression factor. But be careful, it's a vertical stretch or compression factor. And the other thing we can get from this form is the C value tells us the Y intercept. So two important pieces of information when we see something in standard form. The next form I want to look at here is factored form. The factored form of a parabola looks like this. f of x equals a times x minus r times x minus s. And again, the a value has the same things as above. The a value is actually going to represent the same thing in all the different forms. Again, the a value cannot be 0. And we just have a line again. But the thing we know here is that the r value and the s value are the zeros. Or the x-intercepts. Let's look at the last form of a parabola, and that is vertex form. In vertex form, we have f of x equals a x minus h all squared plus k. Again, some textbooks you might see the h and the k being different values, different letters rather, uh, but the same form. But uh, typically what we've seen in this course is h and k. And h and k represent the vertex coordinates. So what you can see is, is if we wanted to figure out, for example, um, some information about a golf ball launched through the air, what we would do is we'd start, we could, we could look at standard form and tell you um, the y-intercept, so how high it was launched from. Uh, then we could look at the factored form and determine when it hit the ground. And then we could look at the vertex form and determine how high it went and when it was that high. So there's different information we can figure out from each of these forms. Now, we don't necessarily need to form, find each form for every question. And so that's going to be the trick as we move forward. What do we need to do with each question? I just want to highlight one final thing before we do that, and that is this. I want you to recall that the axis of symmetry runs vertically through the vertex. That brings us to the addendum that you will have received if you're in my class. And I uh, just want to highlight a few things about this. You can read it, obviously, yourself. Um, but the properties we're going to be asked to find are the 0, the f of 0, which is the y-intercept, the maximum or minimum value. You could be asked to find the axis of symmetry. We already noted that was a vertical line. So it's going to be a line in the form x equals. And then we'll also be determining the domain and the range in some questions. So let's go ahead and do some examples using these. If you need to pause it and read this over, feel free. First example I want to do with you is expressing something in standard form. So, for example, if I have f of x equals negative 2 x plus 2 all squared minus 6, the reason I might want to express it in standard form is that would tell me what is the y-intercept. So that would be the type of question where it, said, where it might say, um, determine the y-intercept, and you would have to know, I need to express this in standard form. Let's do that. We do that by foiling or expanding out the x plus 2 squared. That's a perfect square, which is really nice, because we can just go ahead and rec recognize the first term squared plus 2 times the first term times the last term plus the last term squared. 2 squared is just 4. 
And if we simplify that out, we get negative 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 6. And then we just use a distributive property with a negative 2 times each of the terms in the brackets. And we get negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 8 minus 6. Again, we need to simplify that one more step to get to the point where it's negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 14. And then we know that the y-intercept is minus 14. You also know that this is going to be um, stretched vertically by a factor of 2. The question didn't ask for this, but it's worth noting this. And the other thing we can note is that it's been flipped or reflected over the x-axis. So all this information we can tell from standard form. If I graph a very simple sketch for you, and you can do this as well in your notes, very, very simple, um, something like this. Here's a parabola, and its vertex is right at the x value of 4. That's all I give you. I say, what is the equation for the axis of symmetry? What is the equation for the axis of symmetry? Now, the axis of symmetry is this line right here that has the same shape on each side of the line. It's as if you put a mirror right there and reflected the one side on the other. And what I hope you notice then is it has to be, for a vertical line, it has to be x equals, and because it passes through the x value of 4, x equals 4. And that's it. That's all there is to that. Let's look at a third example here. In this example, we'll look at graphing something. If it says graph h of t equals negative 3t squared plus 12t. How would you do that? Pause the video, try to do that yourself, and then check the answer in a moment. I will note that the h value is for height and t is for time. That's typically what we have in these cases. If we're trying to graph something and we're given something in standard form, which I hope you caught this, by the way, it's in standard form, the only thing we can tell from this is that the c value is 0. So that means its y-intercept is 0. In fact, we're not dealing with y on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're dealing with the height. So really what we need is we need to figure out what the vertex is and what the zeros are. Anytime we're asked to graph something, it's finding the vertex and the zeros. Those three points are essential to graphing a problem. I want to just put a little star around that because that's a really important point. Now I've continued on here and you could argue that you could factor that or complete the square. I think factoring is easier. So typically I want to find the zeros first. And I did that by factoring. I let my h of t equal 0 and then I set each of those factors negative 3t and t minus 4 equal to 0. And I found that t was equal to 0 or t was equal to 4. So now what we need to do is figure out what the vertex is. And we'll do that below. In this case, the independent variable is t. So the t value of the vertex is equal to adding those two zeros together and dividing them by 2, which is just going to be 2. So if the t value of the vertex is 2, then we substitute that into h of t. And what we find is that h, the h value of the vertex, is going to be equal to negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2, which ends up giving negative 12 plus 24, which is 12. Now I have my three key points, and I can graph this. I have a vertex at 2, 12, and I have my two zeros and my parabola, roughly, you can probably draw this better on your page than I can, looks like that. I label it with my equation.